What's up guys, welcome to Huffman Half Tech and today Apple released iOS 14. Now, this is my iPhone 6s and I'm going to be updating to iOS 14 and seeing how it performs. Now, with the current version that I have here on this iPhone, if we go to the settings and then go to general and go to the software update, you can see that currently I'm on iOS 13.5.1. So with this iOS 13.5.1, performance has been very good for me however when it comes to battery life that has been very poor so i'm hoping that with updating to ios 14 hopefully performance will stay up and battery life would have improved so before this update the battery percentage or battery health capacity that i have here if we go to the battery section and go to battery health i have 80 percent so when i last updated to the ios 13.5.1 i actually lost six percent now and so let's quickly update to ios 14 and see how this device performs and as it updates let's quickly see what i have here if we go to the about section before the update on ios 13.5.1 the uh, software version that i have here is 13.5.1 and the build number with that software is 17f 80 and if we go down here we can see that the modem framework that i have before updating to ios 14 is 7.60.01 so with ios 14 we expect this to change and most of the issues that i had with regards to cell wi-fi bluetooth and airdrop and many other wireless connection that is expected to be resolved so let's quickly go back to the software update page and after it updates we'll see how our device performs here hey guys so our device is now updated to ios 14 and if we go into the settings there right there and then go to the about section we can see that we have ios 14 also in the software update section you can see that we don't have any new update and the update that's available here is ios 14 as you can see so going back a little bit to see what this update came as it's ios 14 and the build number that came with this update is 188 five three zero one v now it this update does have a v at the end and that goes to indicate that it's a very very unstable version usually if an update is a beta version a at the end represents the highest stability and the lower you go down the chain the less stable it is so v is very bad and it goes to tell how much unstable this update is so that's the software version and then if we go to the uh, modem firmware here you can see that the modem firmware here is 7.50.00 so hopefully that's a slight upgrade and any issues with cell wi-fi bluetooth and any other wireless connection issues have been resolved now something terrible that i noticed with this update by the way this is an iphone 6s and it's a 16 gig so before the update i actually had 11.81 gig you can always go back in the video and see that and as you can see here i now have 1.73 gigs now i don't know if that is a bug that came with this update but but it was supposed to basically override the space that was taken by the previous version which was iOS 13.5.1 so that is something worth highlighting and this is something to watch out for so this update for me took over 10 gig which is very terrible and very horrifying so again something new on this page we can see that we now have sim lock here so if you click on that option you can be able to tell if a device is sim locked or not but this one is actually not sim locked but as you can see it says that this might be sim locked so i don't know again if that is a bug or something that apple needs to work on fixing when it comes to ios 14. now going back a little bit to the uh, general section we can see that we now have an option that says picture in picture right there and you can see that it's turned on by default as you update and it says when this is on videos will continue playing in an overlay even when you press the home button so that is something new that came with this update and then also something new that came with this update if we go back a little 
little bit to the home page of the settings app we can see that we now have a new menu which is the home screen so if we click on that and this basically asks you where you want new apps to show do you want them to show on the home screen or in the app library only so this is the app library if you were to select this option by the way so if you go on your home screen this is the app library here as you can see so if you set it on to app library all new applications that you install won't go to the home screen but will only go to the app library so that's something new also but i'll just keep it on the app home screen and also we have notification badges to be able to show in app library so when you are in the app library here you can be able to receive notifications too so that's something new that's worth highlighting and then if we go back a little bit to the control center which is right here you can see that we have new widgets and a new widget with highlighting by the way is this one that says sound recognition so if we were to input this sound recognition widget there and then go to our uh, home screen and swipe up to access the control center here you can see that there is the widget right there and if you click on that widget you can see that this widget recognizes unique sounds like a fire alarm siren smoke and many others or even a baby crying so those are unique sounds that you receive special alerts either on your iphone or apple watch if you enable this shortcut when it comes to the control center now going back to the wallpaper section we have a new wallpaper here so if you see uh, this section here we have more new steels wallpapers and basically this is what was previewed as wwdc kicked off today and you can see that we have a series of versions of it we have this one as the red and sort of grayish and then we have like a blue bluish version of it right here and then we have like a, a plain version of the same wallpaper so it will also be able to change from night to day as you can see all these wallpapers have those day and night tags so that's something new that also came with this update and then also within settings if we go to privacy here we can see that we now have tracking and so when this feature is turned on you basically get notifications of applications that will be tracking you but as you can see for me i can turn it on or off it just is off and i think it's because i don't have applications that work with this tracking ui so that's something new also worth mentioning and then if we go back to the settings and go to the messages portion which is right here you can see that we now have an option oh my phone actually got stuck a little bit so there's a bit of a lag there when you go to messages initially but as you can see here it's now working so you can see that we have a new feature called notify me and basically this feature notifies you if you are tagged in a group conversation so let's say if someone says at your name and so on just like how instagram and facebook work so it's good that it's coming to messages and that's something new also now let's go on to perhaps the biggest feature or the biggest change when it comes to ios 14 and that is home screen widgets so if you swipe to the widget section and that is the page always on the far left you can see that we have a lot of different widgets and now these widgets you can basically drag them to your home screen according to your need and according to the widget that you want so let me just show you for example this battery percentage widget right there so if we long press on it we now have an option to add to home screen or basically just remove widgets so if we add it to home screen you can see that you know you can also basically drag it and add it to whichever page you want and actually when you are at a home screen you can see that you can add more widgets as you can see let's say these um, news or activity widget and yeah you can see that this widget has now been added and to complete the widgets is like this and this is actually a stacked widget so you can see that we have activity and then we have notes and we have so many others right so this is a stacked widget and if you want you can actually delete something so let's say for example i don't want this map here i can long press on it and remove stack and all the stacked widgets would have been removed so again let's just edit the home screen um, and then add the widget 
So let's add the same widget and we add it to the same page. By the way, you can drag it to any page that you want, by the way. So yeah, that's something cool. And it's good that, you know, you can sort of add stacked widgets and so on. So in a stacked widget, you can actually also delete a certain stack. So you can see that, you know, you can edit stack. And let's say, for example, I don't want notes in this widget. I can just remove notes just like that. And if I was to go back to the my widget right here, you can see that notes is no longer there right so that's something new that came with this ios 14 and perhaps the biggest change you can also add different widgets and also search different widgets by the way as they come over onto the ios platform now something also that's available with the home page if we edit home page let's long press there and then say edit home page you if you long press these three dots here or just tap these three dots as you can see there you have these pages whereby you if you you don't want to see certain pages you can uncheck them just like that and once you're done basically you see that all those pages and applications that were in the pages that are unticked are unavailable now and you can see that we now just have two basically pages right here so that's something new that came with this update and if we want to add them back of course we can always long press on the application and click edit home screen and check those pages that we would have removed. So that's something new that came with iOS 14 and it's probably the biggest change that came with iOS 14. In iOS 14, we also have a new application and that is this Translate app. It's a new app that came with the update and by default it's installed and you don't have to download it from the app store. So yeah, let me show you how it works. You can basically tap the mic and say something. So as you can see, this iPhone is listening to me and so once I'm done speaking what I want to translate all I have to do is to go and press this play button here and it will start playing into the translate language that I've selected and it's actually speaking Spanish. So yeah, I can actually select from 11 different languages and that is cool and something that came with this update. Now Siri also got a slight update. As you can see, when you activate Siri, instead of covering the whole screen, it only covers a small portion of this screen. And if you want to say something to Siri, um, he can be able to search it up and the pop-up will come on top of the screen, as you can see, instead of covering the whole screen. So what's the time like? What's the time like? So as you can see on the iPhone 6S, there's actually a big and long delay when it comes to activating Siri. So I don't know why that is so. I was actually having difficulties, you know, interacting with Siri. Sometimes it responds, sometimes it doesn't. And I don't know why it takes so long on the iPhone 6S, but it seems like it was just the initial activation. And as you can see here, Siri now replies better. And that's something good. And it's good to see that instead of covering the whole screen, it covers just a small portion. Now also, so when you receive a call from someone instead of that core screen covering everything it now just covers a small portion of the top screen let me call this phone so that you can see so yeah this is a call from instagram and basically any call be it instagram facebook or even a call from the phone app it won't cover the whole screen and if you want you can accept by just tapping the accept button or decline or just silence it or by just swiping up there's also an update when it comes to memoji stickers and memojis so basically this phone doesn't support memojis and i also don't use messages on this phone so yeah if you do have a device that has memojis and supports it know that there's better customization and more ways to personalize and edit your memoji character now i noticed that apple maps got way way better and by the way when i updated to ios 4 it actually deleted Google Maps and I had to re-download Google Maps. I don't know why it did that. I don't know if it's a bug or it was done by 
Apple purposely, but I actually had to download Google Maps right there. But yeah, Apple Maps did get slightly better. They added and improved on the privacy and also you now have cycling whenever you want to navigate to a certain place or location. And also if you have an electric car, you can be able to input the information of the car that you have and it will be able to tell you the specific connector that the car uses and show you around on whether there are any free charging stations available and if you are planning to walk or cycle to a certain destination it will be able to tell you how the terrain is like and how much calories you are expected to burn so yeah it's kind of good and it's slight improvement though not something big but it's good to know that those changes have been made and also the health app did improve a little bit we have some new features that came with it you are now able to track your sleep and input your sleep information within the health app and that will be integrated with the apple watch to correctly track your sleep and movements as you sleep and also be able to wake you up when you set the time so that's something new also that came with this update safari did get a little bit better it now has better privacy and you are able to translate to different languages and that's just a slight update that came to safari and it works more seamless and a bit better and just take note that when you install ios 14 initially opening apps for the first time will be a bit jerky and a bit slow so i noticed that also with safari something that we expected with this update is the ability to be able to change default applications like instead of setting safari as your default browser you could set google chrome and instead of setting maps as your default navigation app you could set like google maps and so on but so far i haven't been able to do that on the iPhone 6s it could be something that's coming later on for iOS 14 the camera app works a bit faster you can see that it opens faster and when snapping pictures you can see that it doesn't really delay a lot and there's no slight jump between shots and reloading the camera and also when you go to your preview you can easily zoom out to the point that you actually won't be able to see units so it they have added a little bit of a zoom range and that is good and also the music app did get a bit of an improvement there's a few minor features that came to the music app i don't use the app Apple Music app I use Spotify so yeah if you do use Apple Music there are some minor updates that came to the Apple Music app so yeah that's about it for me when it comes to iOS 14 I hope you found this video helpful when it comes to the iPhone 6s and thank you very much for watching if you like the video please leave a like and subscribe stay safe and I'll see you next time peace